Welcome everybody on this Saturday afternoon. We're glad to have you here with us to learn how to do knitting for the first time maybe. My name's Claire. I'll be your moderator in the Zoom chat there. So if you have any questions, just use that function and I can either answer directly or I'll turn it over to Darren who is going to be our teacher there on screen. Go ahead, Darren. All right, so let's just let's jump right in because we've got a lot to cover and we do have a hard stop today um, right at the end of class. We have one hour to get through as much as we can. So let's switch to the view of my hands and we will jump right in. All right, so this is um, basically Knitting 101. So if you've never knitted before, then this is a great class for you. And if you have knitted before, then um, this is a good review. So for knitting is a great hobby to take up because you don't need a lot of supplies and you don't need a lot of investment to get started. Um, today, I'm just using this yarn and this is um, it's yarn by Lion Brand called Hometown. And this color is charcoal gray. And this is a size um, six yarn, which means it's extra thick and super bulky. So it's great for teaching because students can really see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to be using uh, double pointed needles today. You can certainly do this on single on um, straight needles or on double pointed needles. And that's really all you need just to get started. I think you mean circular process. needles, Darren. Oh, I'm sorry. Circular needles. Yes. Um, these are circular needles. Um, you really don't need much to get started. So if you're just kind of curious about knitting, um, all you need to start are just needles and yarn. Um, after that, though, there's many, many things you can buy and so many things that you can get to make your projects go a lot better. But just to get started, that's all you need. So the first thing we need to do is to attach our yarn to these needles. So we need to get our yarn on these needles. And the way you do that is you tie a slip knot and then you put that slip knot right on your needles. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to tie a slip knot. And if you already know how to tie a slip knot, the way you currently tie your slip knot is 100% fine. Um, if you don't know how to tie a slip knot, then this is just one of many ways to tie a slip knot. So you don't have to do it this way, but this is a very good way to do it. And I call this method um, short over long. And you put your tail, which is the short bit, over top of the long piece, which is connected to your working yarn. So it's short over long, and then you put your hand in the middle of the circle, you make a big loop, you put your hand in the middle of that loop, you reach under the loop, so the yarn's going over your hand, and then you're gonna hold on to the tail of the yarn and hold on to your working yarn at the same time. And then you're just gonna pull that loop back through and I'll show this again a few times. And that is how you do a slip knot. And if you did it correct, then it'll just slip out like that and you, it'll just kind of come untied, okay? So let's do it again. So here is my short piece. So short over long, make a circle, put your hand in the center of the circle. You're gonna sneak under, the strand of yarn and grab the tail. And you're going to put the tail and your working yarn, you're going to hold them together tight. And then you're just going to pull this loop of the tail back through. You're not pulling the whole tail back through, just the loop. Okay, one more time. So short over long short over long, you reach under, you're gonna grab the tail, messed up. You're gonna reach under, grab the tail and your working yarn and just pull the tail back through. Any questions about any particular step? Do you wanna see me do it again or are we ready? Reach under. Grab your tail, hold your tail and your working yarn together and just pull it through. How do we feel about it? 
Good. I think we're okay. ready. Once you um, have your slip knot, you're just going to push it, put it right on your needle and cinch it up. Now you don't want it tight. It should move freely on your needles. You don't want it too tight. You don't want it super loose either. It should just um, think of the word snug, you know, kind of snug, but not tight. So now that we have our um, yarn on our needles, what we need to do is decide how many stitches we're going to be working with. Now your pattern will tell you how many stitches to cast on. The pattern might say cast on five stitches, 10 stitches, 200 stitches. So for this little exercise today, I'm gonna to cast on just um, like 10. Let's start with 10. So to cast on stitches, and I'll demonstrate this several times and we'll talk through it. You enter the stitch. So you have to enter the stitch going front to back and your right hand needle must go under your left hand needle. So front to back with the right hand needle um, going under the left hand needle. And that is gonna form an X. So once you get to that point, you can hold everything in your left hand and now your right hand is available to do other things. And I'm gonna use my right hand to wrap the yarn around my left, my right hand needle. So you're gonna hold, you have to do it counterclockwise like this. So counterclockwise is, so if this is a clock and it says three o'clock, you're gonna hold your yarn at three o'clock, three, two, one, blast off. Okay, so it's going counterclockwise. You wanna hold this pretty snug. Now you're gonna hold, you're gonna pull your right hand needle back out and you're gonna kind of scoop it. You're gonna be bringing, you wanna bring that yarn that you wrapped around with it. Pull up a nice loop and then you're gonna take your left hand needle, you're gonna jump over, so leapfrog over it, back towards your thumb, and then you're gonna pick it up and transfer it to the left-hand needle. Snug everything up. Now I have two stitches. I have my slip knot and my first stitch that I cast on. So let's do that a couple more times. Enter, so front to back, enter the stitch, Wrap the yarn, bring that yarn back through to make a loop, and then pick it up with the left hand needle from the back side, transfer it to the left hand needle, and snug it up just a little bit. Now I have three. So there's a little rhyme that you can use, and I'm going to show you a couple of different things. So you go in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, get in line, Jack. So that's a little nursery rhyme. You can say to yourself to help you remember, or there's another one where you stab it, choke it, goop out its gut, and then you stab it again, just for good measure. But you know, I'm a pacifist, so I like the first one better where you go in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, get in line, Jack. So he's gonna get in line with the other stitches. Okay, so if you've never done this before, sometimes it does look very complicated and a little overwhelming. So is there a particular step that we're having trouble with? You wanna see me just do it again? Um, which, any particular part that's confusing? So you go through here, go front to back with your right hand needle, front to back, so that's kind of what it looks like. You take your working yarn and you wrap it counterclockwise. 
around counterclockwise. Hold it kind of snug. Now, if you look here, there's the yarn that we wrapped. So you can see it kind of wants to come through with the needle anyway. But when you pull your right hand needle out, you want to keep the tip of your right hand needle touching your left hand needle. You see how my needles are always kind of touching. And then that way it brings that loop with it. It almost has no other choice. And sometimes that's the hardest part about knitting is learning how to bring that loop through. So, see, see the, my needles are always touching. The tip of my right hand needle is still touching the left hand needle. And when I transfer it from the bottom to the top, it brings that loop with it. And then you bring on a loop big enough to work with. Take your left hand needle, it leapfrogs over the stitch back towards your thumb. And then on the way back up, it scoops up that stitch. You transfer it over and snug it up just a bit. All right. How are we feeling about all this? We feel good about it? I think so. We've got a couple questions here. Um, a good question from Penny, which side is the skein side and which side is the tail side? Um, or which know. thread, which piece of yarn are you using to make the new stitches? Oh, the working yarn. So the tail, this tail is actually a little too long. Um, you really only want a tail that's about like four or five inches long. You just need it long enough for finishing at the end. And if you leave it too long, like mine was a little long, then you're always could get confused and knit with it by mistake. So you should always be knitting with your working yarn. Is that, is that the question? Yes, I think that was the question. And then if we have people whose stitches are seeming too tight, is that just because we're all learning a new skill and we're a little bit nervous about it? Um, Possibly. Let me show you a few tricks um, that can uh, make your stitches too tight um, and how to avoid that. So one thing, when I first learned to knit, I taught myself how to knit and my stitches were so tight I couldn't even move my needles. So that was definitely wrong. So I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it to demonstrate. So you can see my stitches that I've made are down here on the point of my needle. And if I make another stitch and just put it on the point of my needle. And then I'm trying to just push them up a little bit, but I don't push them to the fattest part of the needle. Then by the time they get pushed up to the fattest part of the needle, there's not enough slack in the stitches and they become very, very tight. See, I can hardly even get them to go up onto the fattest part. So you don't want to shape your stitches down here where it's very narrow. What you want to get in the habit of doing is when you take your right hand needle, you want to, you don't want to just put it in like this, just the tip of it. You want to put it all the way through the fattest part. You want to wrap it and you want to wrap it around the fattest part of your needle. When you bring it back through, when you transfer it over, you want to make sure that you're shaping it around the fattest part of your needle right there. And then when I first learned to knit, I would always then pull it really tight right there. I've gotten a bad habit of every time I make a stitch to pull it really tight because I, I didn't know any better and I thought you wanted your knitting to be tight. Um, you don't really want it to be that tight. So try to just kind of like have a loose grip on everything. Don't hold everything super tight. Like don't, you don't need like a death grip on your needle. Just let things rest comfortably in your hand. So that way you're not pulling it tight, but also make sure you're shaping the stitches on the fattest part of your needle because that's where they're supposed to be shaped. And then if, if you end up with great big loose stitches like that, just kind of snug them up a little bit. And then every now and then make sure that everything's flowing nicely and not tight. But it, it does take practice. Sometimes new knitters are extremely tight knitters. And if you find your knitting to be always very, very tight, then just go up a needle size or two. I used to have to use two needle sizes larger than what was recommended because my knitting was so super tight. 
but it kind of works out as you practice. Okay, any other questions? I think that covers the gist of it for now. So how do we feel about the cast on? Are we ready to see the knit stitch or any more questions about how to do this cast on? I think we could probably see a few more stitches cast on. All right. So let me talk you through each step. So you want to hold your knitting so that your work is kind of facing down. So this is this is the length of my knitting. And as I keep going, it's going to get longer like this. To kind of hold it in your hand like this. You go through from front to back keeping the right hand needle on the bottom. And then you can transfer everything into your left hand. Um, sometimes with knitting, it's hard to, you have two needles, you have yarn, so you have three things to hold, but you only have two hands. So if you put everything in your left hand, now your right hand is available to do other things. So I'm gonna use my right hand to wrap my yarn counterclockwise around my right hand needle. I'm going to put kind of snug so that when I bring you so that when I bring my right hand needle through, I can scoop that loop, I can scoop that strand of yarn right through and pull up a nice big loop. And then you want to pick it up with the left hand needle, you leapfrog over it, back towards your thumb, and then scoop it up, transfer it over. One, two, three, four. So it's four steps. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, pull up a loop, transfer it over. All right. So let's let's go ahead and do the knit stitch. The knit stitch is very, very similar to this cast on. Now there are many, many, many ways to cast on. So whenever you start learning anything about knitting, just know there are probably 50 ways of doing everything. So there's all kinds of different ways. Um, sometimes they're used for specific reasons and sometimes they're pretty versatile. This cast on is called the knitted on cast on because it's very, very similar to the knit stitch. And the reason we teach this one is because it is very, easy to learn because it's so much like the knit stitch, but also this is a great cast on for almost all beginning projects. It gives a very nice foundation for the edges of hats and scarves, baby blankets. So this is a good one to start with, but there are many, many other ones you can learn. All right, so the knit stitch is very, very similar. So I'm gonna do the knit stitch now. And the main difference is instead of maintaining all of our stitches on one needle, we're going to be having stitches on both needles. So we have to be extra careful. And we're gonna transfer all of these stitches from the left-hand needle over to the right-hand needle. So we start out just the same. We enter the stitch, wrap the yarn counterclockwise. We bring that loop through, but then this time we push this off the edge of our left-hand needle and now I've got a one on my right hand needle. Okay, so you wanna make sure you're guarding these tips of your needles. You don't want it to slip off because it'll start to unravel, all right? So you enter your stitch, wrap your yarn, bring the loop through. Now, the only thing that's different between this and the cast on is now we're pushing it off and we're maintaining stitches on both needles now. We have stitches on the left and the right. And so one at a time, we're gonna knit all the stitches from the left to the right. And here's another rhyme you can remember. So you go in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. So this time he jumps off, right? 
in through the front door, run around the back, climb through the window, off jump jack. Or for people that are more aggressive, you stab it, you choke it, you scoop out its guts, and then you throw it off a cliff just for good measure, right? But it's just, again, it's just four simple steps this as well. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring up a nice loop, transfer the stitch to the right hand needle. All right. Um, any particular step of the stitch that you're not, who are you getting hung up anywhere specifically? Um, is it making sense? It's the craziest thing you ever saw. What, what's going on out there? Um, Alicia says her loops are looking loose when Jack jumps off. Off jumps Jack, so like right here, it gets loose. Mm -hmm. like that. It's okay to snug them a little bit. So don't pull them tight, but it's okay if, if you have a great big loose stitch like that. It's oh, don't you think, Claire? What do you think? I say it's okay to snug it up a little bit. You're not trying to strangle anyone or try to like cut off your, you know, pull it too tight, but just snug it up a little bit. How do, how do you handle that, Claire? Yeah, you can snug it up a little bit. And I think probably what a lot of beginners do is they try to pull those needles apart really far apart. And you don't sure. actually need that much space in there. True. So you want to try to keep the tips of your needles kind of close together. That's a good point. So when you're making your stitch, see, you want to keep them close together. Oh, and here's another thing. Let me show you this. You want to keep your stitches closer to the tip because if your stitches are way back here, when you try to transfer it over, you see how I'm stretching it and pulling it? That might be, and then I'm pulling them too far apart and that's going to give extra slack there. So try to keep your stitches right here where it's just starting to taper. So you've got the full thickness of your needle and it's tapering. So try to keep your stitches right along that edge. And then that way you can shape them on your right hand needle and then transfer them over, but keep your needles close together. You don't wanna pull them far apart. Any other, are we actually making knit stitches? Is anyone? Are we having a good time? Do we all still love yarn? Hopefully we all still love yarn. We have a good couple yarn. good comments on your, uh, your little rhymes here, both the Jack and the uh, little more violent version. <laughs> well, Halloween is coming up, so I mean, scary things might be happening. We don't know. All right, I'm gonna go back. I, skipped over one step that I wanted to show you and I don't want to skip it. So I'm going to unknit a few of these so I can demonstrate ending a row. All right, so I've knitted most of my stitches from my left hand needle over to my right hand needle. I have two left. So I'm just going to knit them just like normal. For some reason, whenever um, people start knitting, they're, they always see this last stitch and they're like, what do I do with the last stitch? What, how does, but the last stitch wants to be treated just like everybody else. So you treat the last stitch exactly like all other stitches. You enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring the yarn through, transfer it over. So I'm not sure why, but I've, I've found that when I teach classes, people always kind of get hung up on that last stitch. So now what happened is all of my stitches are gone from my left hand needle. All of them are now in my right hand. So what I'm gonna do is just trade and so now all of my stitches are now in my left hand needle. I have no stitches in my right hand needle. So you just start again doing the same thing. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through, transfer it over. And then once you get good at it, and it does take a lot of practice, you can you know, just knit and enjoy it. And you don't have to think about each step. Do we want to start over with the slip knot? Do you want to see how it starts again or how do we feel about it? We, we're about halfway through. 
Um, yes, we do have a request. I think the slipknot's okay, but the cast on at least. Because now that you've seen like knitting and the cast on, it'll start to make more sense for you as we go over it again. Sometimes when you've never seen anything like this before, it doesn't make sense the first couple of times. <coughs> So we're starting with the slip knot. So let's see the view is clear. So we're starting with the slip knot. You want to enter the stitch, make an X. So it's going to be in the shape of an X. When the needles are in the shape of an X, they're um, touching each other, and you're able to—they're able to work together. Um, Sometimes new knitters do try to hold their needles parallel to each other for some reason. That's a natural, for some reason, that seems like a natural thing for people to do. This is wrong. This will make it almost impossible to knit. So always make sure your needles are kind of crossed um, and that way they can work together. Think of it like a pair of scissors or a pair of pliers. So enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, pull up a loop, and then transfer it over and then kind of snug everything up. Make sure everything's moving nice and loose. Enter the stitch. Wrap the yarn. Pull that strand of yarn through and make a nice loop. And then the left hand needle will jump over that loop, come back towards your thumb scoop it up from the back side and transfer it over. So enter your stitch, make the X, wrap it counterclockwise. You have a good question from Mary on that point, Darren. What happens if you wrap it clockwise instead of counterclockwise? All right, so couple of things um, in knitting, you, you want your stitches to be shaped a certain way and you want them, it seems very trivial. Um, this is just a loop of yarn, right? And if I put it on this way or if I put it on this way, it doesn't seem like it should make any difference, but it actually does make a big difference. If you, um, are entering the stitch in the wrong direction. If you enter the stitch from the back side instead of the front, or if you wrap your yarn clockwise in, instead of counterclockwise, what will happen is you will get a twisted stitch um, and the twisted stitch will be very tight. It'll be much tighter than you want. And it will look a little twisted on the front of your work. So if you do all of your stitches twisted, it's gonna kind of kick the one leg up a little bit and it'll give it a different texture and be very tight. And it'll be hard to knit the next row actually. Um, so you don't wanna have twisted stitches. So that's why. So if you enter through the front, it's a very good question actually. Wrap it around counterclockwise, bring it back through. And if you just transfer the stitch straight over like this and not pick it up from the back, you will also get a twisted stitch. That's why we have to jump over and pick it up from the back. And this untwists it. And in my mind, this feels like I'm twisting it, but actually you're not, you're untwisting it. So um, yeah, you don't wanna end up with twisted stitches. I mean, there are worse things that you could have happen to you, but you know, we don't want it to happen if we can avoid it. Any other questions? A little bit farther down the line, but we did have someone comment that the last stitch after they've knit a few rows, the last stitch is looking a little bit looser and sort of more messy than all the rest. So um, knitting is only truly happy and well-behaved knit stitches. If there is a stitch beside them, so if you have a stitch on the left and the right, and you have a stitch above it and below it. That's the only way knit stitches are ever truly 
very happy and very well behaved. If you don't have a stitch on this side, like this stitch here is unsupervised on that side, then it has the opportunity to kind of act up and it kind of doesn't, the tension isn't held as even. But by the time you knit the stitch above it, then it has a stitch below on one side and above, then it, it holds the tension pretty even. So you can pull that last stitch a little tighter than you normally do, but usually it kind of works out after you've knitted a couple of rows. But it's not unusual for that um, edge stitch to look a little bit wonky until you get several rows in. Right. Is there any particular place, any particular step that people are struggling with? I'm glad to demonstrate it as many times as we can. We have about a half hour left. So you enter the stitch, you go front to back, make the X, you wrap it counter clockwise. Pull your right hand needle back through, bringing that strand of yarn with it. And you want to create, pull up this loop. And then you want to jump over that loop back towards your thumb. Pick that loop up. Now it looks very complicated, but it's just four steps. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn. Pull up a loop, transfer it to the left needle. We do have a few questions. Seems like we have some people with experience in here about why you're using circular needles. The reason I'm using circular needles is because um, my phone is right here and I only have so much space in between. And when I use straight needles, they always come up and hit my phone. So that's the reason I'm using them. But um, if, you're, if you're traveling in an airplane or on a bus, or you wanna take your knitting with you, this is a lot easier to pop into a knitting bag. This will fit in a knitting bag or like a Ziploc bag even, and you can take it on the go. But straight needles are harder to pop into a bag, I find. So that's why, two reasons. And we do have a couple of requests to see the slip knot again, if we've got time to go all the way back to the beginning. <clears throat> now remember, there are many, many ways of tying a slip knot and of casting on. This is just, these are just the ways I'm showing you today. So you put the short, short tail over the long. So this is the long because it's connected to my working yarn. You reach under your circle, grab your tail, hold on to the working yarn. And then you're just pulling a loop. You're pulling that tail back through just a loop of it though. You don't wanna pull the whole thing back through. Then you know you did it right if it pulls out. So just lay it out like this. Just make a circle. You can make a little heart, make it super cute, right? Now it's super cute. It's not intimidating at all, but it's a cute little heart. You put your hand in the center. You sneak under, so you're crawling under that um, circle, that strand that's creating part of the circle. You're gonna hold your tail and your working yarn together. And then you're gonna grab the tail and pull a loop of it back through. Okay. When I do this, when I'm really working on a real project, this is how I tie a slip knot. That's what it looks like in real life after you know how to do it. You just, and before I was really teaching, somebody wanted me to show them how to do a slip knot. 
and I'm like, I don't know how to do it. You just, you just hold it in your hand and you just make a slip knot. Like I didn't know how to explain it. So, but um, that's, that's how you do it. Okay. And then you just pop that right on your needle. That you don't want it tight, but it should move. Nice, it shouldn't be too loose. And now we're ready to start casting on. Stitch, wrap the yarn, pull it through. How much time? We have about 20 minutes. What questions do we have? I do wanna to get to the point where we're binding off. I think we're ready to see the knit stitch again and see how to transfer the stitches from the left needle over to the right. All right, let me get a few cast on here so we have enough to work with. All right, that'll give us, let me do one more. Right, now that we've got our stitches cast on, we're gonna transfer all stitches from the left-hand needle to the right-hand needle. So you enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring it through, and it jumps off. So in through the front door, Run around the back, climb through the window, off jumps Jack. You can go ahead and snug it up just a bit. So enter the stitch and you can see how I'm using my fingers to kind of guide the stitch. That's another thing that I tend to see new knitters do. It's like they wanna hold their needle back here um, it's almost like they feel like they can't touch the yarn with their fingers because they'll they'll get it dirty or something. I'm, you know, and I'm not sure what the edit, the mindset is, but like, it's like they want to use the needle to do all the work, but then needles are only there. They're not there to do all the work. So you have to make sure you have your fingers right down here and you're directing the yarn. It seems really silly, but I've seen a lot of new knitters when I used to teach in person that used to do that. They would hold their needles like this and then try to, to do it like this without really, and it's almost an impossible thing. You wanna make sure that you're actually using your fingers. See, I'm using this finger to hold that stitch in place. And then I enter the stitch, wrap the yarn. When I bring it through, you know, you can put your finger here and you can kind of help to push that loop through. And then you can use this finger to push it off if you want to. So make sure you're using your fingers and your hands to your best advantage. Okay. Stab it, choke it. Oops, I'm gonna try to fall. Scoop out its guts, throw it off a cliff. Stab it, choke it, scoop out its guts, throw it off a cliff. One, two, three, four. Enter the stitch, wrap the yarn, bring that loop through, transfer it over. And then the last stitch wants to be treated like everybody else. And then sometimes after you've knitted a row, it might be all twisted up in your hand like that. So what you want to do, what I recommend doing is put it, go ahead and put it in your left hand, um, kind of sort everything out, make sure it's straight on your needles. You can give everything a little snug right here to kind of line everything up. You know, look at it, make sure it looks nice, admire your work, you're doing something new, you should feel proud of yourself. And then once you get it nicely organized on your needle, you're ready to go again. So enter the stitch, wrap your yarn, bring it through. 
And then once you get going, this is what it looks like. But I will tell you, this is the hardest knitting class that you'll ever take. Learning to do knitting from the ground up like this when you have no experience, it is hard. It takes some practice, but it's certainly something that is, um, you know, if you do practice, you'll, you'll be surprised how fast you do learn it and, and pick it up. Um, if you're very frustrated and you're not understanding it, you know, put it down, um, take a break, come back to it when you're feeling more creative or when you're calmed down and try it again. And it'll be a lot easier the next time you try it. Um, lots of practice and patience and being kind to yourself are going to be very important, but you will be able to learn it and get it. If you've never done anything like this before, of course, it seems really strange in your hand. It seems really weird, but that's anything new, right? So don't, don't be ashamed or afraid to like practice and rip it out and start again. Um, keep going with it. You can rewatch this video tomorrow and get, watch it again and go through it again. So you just keep knitting, back knitting all your stitches back and forth like this. I'm just trying to get through a couple of rows so you can see what it looks like. But I'm happy to take any and all questions. We do have a few questions. Um, the first one here, say you're working and you're in the middle of the row and you have to put your knitting down to go, you know, answer the door or whatever. When you pick it back up, how do you know which needle goes into which hand? All right. So my first, my advice is don't do that. Um, Try to finish the row before you put it down if possible. But if you do have to, if there's, you know, if somebody's at the door or something, you do have to put it down. Maybe you throw it in a basket over here or something. You're not being careful and you pick it back up to work on it. Um, first thing I'm going to tell you to do is kind of get it in your hand and look at it. So you're in, when you're in the middle of a row like this, when you're halfway in the middle of a row, your working yarn should always, always, always be coming from the right-hand side, okay? So it should be coming from the right-hand side. So we're looking at it in an incorrect position here. So you wanna make sure, so just go ahead and turn it over. So in the middle of a row, my um, working yarn should be coming from the right-hand side. And if you think about it, it's logical because we're, moving one stitch from the left over to the right. So after you do a stitch, your working yarn is on your right hand side. So whenever you're halfway in the middle of a row, at some point, your working yarn always ends up on your right hand side. So if you lay it down, and also if you have to lay it down and come back to it, go ahead and lay it down just like this. And then when you come back to it and you pick it up, you're right, ready to go. But if you put it in a, a bag or something and you pick it up, you know, go ahead and sort it out in your hand and look, where's my working yarn? It's on my left hand side. That's not right. Now it's on my right hand side. Okay. Any other questions? We do have a question from Barb. I'm hoping she can clarify a little. She asks, uh, is it okay to work the tail into your cast on row? And I'm not sure if she's referring to weaving your end in after you're done or knitting the tail into your cast on. Um, so for this cast on, for most, I'm going to say in most situations, you do not want to do anything to the tail. You want to keep your tail here and I advise weaving it in at the end. If you knit it into your cast on row, um, if your couple of things could be going wrong, like if you're holding it with your working yarn and knitting it in to kind of disguise it, your stitches are gonna be double thick and that's not gonna give you a good look. Or if you knit your whole tail, then your working yarn is gonna be left over here and you're not going to have any yarn to knit back with. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, what I, I did get some clarification. Yes, it was just referring to tucking it in or weaving it in after you've got a few rows. 
yeah, after you know, after you you're either finished or you're done, yes, you will use one of these large eye blunt needles, and we'll, you just kind of sew it in very lightly, and you want to kind of follow the direction of your fabric and weave that in so it's invisible. Yes, that's exactly how you'll finish that. And we've got a couple more good questions. Um, a request to see, oh, I think probably back up a little bit there. After you finish the row, how you switch to get everything in position to start the next row. Okay. And then I, we've been using probably the knit stitch and garter stitch, both terms, but they're not the same thing, right? All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. So, um, so I finished, I've got my left hand needle is empty and my right hand needle has all my stitches. And sometimes it will be a little twisted or something in your hand. So you go ahead and straighten everything out, line everything up. Sometimes if you just snug it a little bit, that'll even your tension out a little bit. All you do is just put it in your left hand. And now my right hand has no stitches and you go ahead and just start. Start knitting. So hopefully that answers that question. Now the knit stitch is a way of creating a stitch. It's, it's a stitch. How do you explain that Claire? The knit stitch, it's, it's a stitch, I guess. You, it's what we're learning. So you enter wrap, pull it through, transfer it over. Now, we're just learning the knit stitch today, but um, there's another stitch called the purl stitch. And when you work the knit stitch and the purl stitch together in different ways, you create lots of different types of fabric. But when you only work the knit stitch and you're knitting flat, you create this fabric, which is called garter stitch. And I always felt like, instead of garter stitch, this should be called garter fabric because you're creating this fabric by using the knit stitch. So there's really no garter stitch. There's the knit stitch that creates this fabric called garter stitch, which is a little confusing to me. What do you think about that, Claire? It is a little confusing and I'm sure it's got some like weird backstory as to why it's called a stitch instead of a whole fabric, but yeah. I don't know it. <laughs> I want to start a petition. We change it to garter fabric, but anyway, they did not let me name it. So we have to live with what, what it is. So this fabric is called garter stitch and it's created by making knit stitches. So that is a little confusing. Um, the nice thing about garter stitch, though, it is reversible. It lays flat. It has this beautiful texture. It's kind of spongy and a little stretchy. So it is a very, very nice fabric. So the knit stitch could be used to create many, many different fabrics and textures, especially when it's combined with the purl stitch. But then this is called garter stitch. Okay. Anything else? We have about 10 minutes. I want to finish this row and then show the bind off. And because I'm trying to rush through a little bit because we do have to end at a certain time. If you have additional questions, um, you can, we, we have taught more in depth knitting 101 classes. So you can um, find those on um, Michael's YouTube page. Or if you have questions, you can contact me on either Instagram or TikTok. You can send me a direct message and I can help you with any questions you have, um, preferably knitting related questions. And um, maybe Claire will put my uh, screen name in the chat. It's Mr. M-I-S-T-E-R Wooly Bear. And you can send me a direct message and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Or on Facebook, you can just send it directly to my name. It's uh, just my name spelled out like normal. So if you have any questions, you can contact me there and I'll be glad to help. All right. So we have our cast on, which creates our work. And then we have our knitting, which creates our fabric, which adds length to our work. So how do we finish it? We can't just take it off of the needles because it'll unravel. So you have to be very careful that you never let this happen where you have live stitches just hanging out because they will unravel. I mean, they don't unravel immediately. So you can just carefully pop them back on, 
but you don't want to let that happen. So we have to finish it in a specific way. And again, there are many, many different ways of binding off, but I'm gonna show you this way, which is a nice all purpose way. So when you're binding off, you wanna always be working with two stitches. So I'm gonna knit two stitches. So I have one and two. So the first stitch is gonna leapfrog over the second stitch and then jump off the edge. So you're gonna kind of pick up that first stitch. You're gonna stretch it a little bit, hold on to the second stitch. You don't want it to fall off. It leapfrogs over, drop it off the edge. Now I have one stitch. So I'm gonna knit another one because I need two. And then, so I have one and two. One is gonna, so pick up one, stretch it a little bit, and it jumps off the end, drops off. You wanna make sure you're keeping number two on there. Okay, so now I need to knit another one. I split my yarn. And if you want to do it with just your finger, so like you can, you can just do it with your finger. When I first learned it, it was a lot easier for me to do it with my finger than with the needle. So instead of picking up with the needle, you can just use your finger. So just kind of pull it and drop it off the edge, maintaining that one. Whatever going to be easier for you. But now I do it this way. So I'm getting close to the end. Any questions about binding off? Like, is there a certain step that doesn't make sense? Is there a certain step you want to see or have explained better? Sometimes it's hard to see on these. I'm not sure if you're able to see what's what I'm doing clearly. So you just knit a stitch just like normal. I have these two stitches. You want to go under that stitch, stretch it a little bit. It leapfrogs over its friend and it drops off the end, maintaining this one. And so now that stitch that dropped off the end, it's not, not just hanging loose, it is looped around this guy. So it's not going to unravel. And that's what creates the secure edging. You can with your finger. You can pull it with your finger. Don't let that one slip off. You do have to be careful. So split your stitch. I almost split it. One more. Now remember, I said you always have to have two stitches. But now what happens? I have one stitch and I have no more stitches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our yarn, leaving about you know six to eight inches or four inches or so, whatever, you know, just enough to work with. You don't wanna skimp and cut it like super short. You know, give yourself a good like five, six inches or something, okay? Now, this is very easy to do. So you're gonna not, you're gonna think there's something special or fancy going on here, but there's not. Um, very easy to do. You just want to pull your needle straight up. And what's going to happen is this loose end is going to come through that stitch and secure it. So you just pull it straight through. And then you can see that stitch is now secured with this tail. And if you have a big loopy, I always think it looks like an ear or something sticking up there. You can use a large eyed blunt needle. You want a needle that has a large enough eye to put your yarn in and it's not sharp. You can kind of go through that and kind of use that tail to kind of pull it in line and then you can kind of reshape it as needed. And that's one way to kind of handle that one last corner if it is out of out of line. And then for weaving in the end, 
I find one of these, um, you can see how it creates these horizontal lines that are going through these textural lines. So I like to find one of those and just kind of go in and out of these bumps, kind of go up and down, always sneaking under them because you want this to be invisible. So I'm going under this bump and I'm gonna come back up, but I'm always going under, under the bump. This is a very simple way weaving in your end and it becomes very, very invisible. And then you wanna you want to go over about two inches and then you wanna to go to the row below it. And start back. Now, one thing you should always do is check the other side, kind of massage it out a little bit, make sure that the other side looks good. You didn't do anything crazy on the other side. And if it looks good, then you're ready to keep going. And then you wanna weave it on the, the row below it going back. Now going one direction and then back the other direction is kind of what locks it in place. And if you get too ambitious and you pull it super tight and like bunch up your fabric like that, um, you see if you knitted fabric is very forgiving, just kind of massage it out a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to snip it off flush with my fabric and it just kind of disappears right in there. You do not want to tie any knots. I know you're tempted to tie a knot because you, you think it's going to make it more secure, but knots do come untied and will unwork, unravel your work. And that happens so often. Knots will not feel nice next to your skin they do not look nice and they will always work their way to the front of your work and they will always work their way. Like if you have a hat with a knot tied, it'll always work its way right to the center of your forehead. So um, do not tie any knots. And we've got two minutes left. So I think we've covered everything we're gonna be able to. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at um, either TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you can review this class tomorrow, or you can look up uh, knitting101michaels.com on YouTube, and it'll bring up some of our past classes with Knitting 101. So, all right, don't forget to practice. Practicing is key. So have a good, thanks for coming to class.